So in the last tutorial we set up the server or you're just coming right to this tutorial to see how we're going to do this. Maybe you have your own website that has its own JSON data and you can easily adapt this to that as well. So you're going to start a master detail application and we'll call it blogtaculus and this code is already up on uh, GitHub so you can go check that out. And we're going to build this a little bit differently this time. We're going to try and make it a little more object oriented and clean. So the basic idea is that we're going to create um, a post object. So create a new file under Blogtaculus Swift file and we'll just call it post because this is a blog. So this will stand for one singular post. So this is kind of like your model of an individual post. And this will stand for the individual post. We'll make a post service that does, and when I say service, post service.swift a, a service basically does all the URL getting and stuff like that. Now there are URL um, networking things out there for Swift already. I haven't found the need to use them yet as long as you can kind of abstract that thing away so that it's not in the middle of your code you can make it nice and clean. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to make a settings.swift and in our settings.swift um, settings.swift we'll store all of our URL stuff so we'll just make that one first and for the settings.swift we'll just make a class here so our class will be called settings first we're going to do one called view posts and that's going to be equal to whatever your root is so you're going to do 192.168.1.6 I'll just make sure here that that's what it is let's see if config so we got 192.168.1.6 okay cool so that's going to be your view post root and then you're just going to get all the posts using post.json and that's all we really need right now Later on, we'll have one for add post and view individual post and all that stuff. So we're good there. Now we can make our individual post object. So for the individual post object, we'll just create a class called post. And when a post comes in from the network, we'll store it as an individual instance of this post object. So we'll get the ID, which is an int, which you know will come from the database. We'll say var title, which is going to be a string. We'll say var author, which is going to be a string. We can say var content, which is going to be a string. And then because none of these have been initialized, we're going to need to initialize them. So we'll say id is an int. We'll do title is a string. We'll do author is a string. We'll do content is a string. We can just set these all. We can say self.id is equal to id. We can say self.title is equal to title. We can say self.author is equal to author. We can say self.content is equal to content. And then we can have something that returns uh, a JSON version of the post itself. So we can have a function called to JSON. And that's going to return a string. Now, we don't really need this at this point. So we'll just say return blank. Right now, we don't need the return JSON, but we'll use it in the future. So now we'll set up our post service so that we can actually get the post from the database. And we'll use our settings to kind of do that as well. So in our post service, what we'll do is we'll just create a class called post service. And the post service, we have to just instantiate our settings. So we'll have settings is equal to a new settings. Um, and we'll do that so that we can inst initialize it when we get it. So in our init method, uh, we won't pass that in. We'll just initialize it. So self.settings is equal to a new uh, settings. So now we have a new settings. Now we can do uh, something like get posts and we'll have a callback, which will be a function. So it'll be an NS dictionary 
um, which returns nothing. We're going to call that function after we've loaded everything. So now what we can do is we can make a function called request. So basically your idea is that you're going to run everything through requests. So you'll have get posts, which will run a request through requests. So we're kind of abstracting this idea of how to do the actual request of the data away. So this request has to take a URL string and it's going to need a callback once it's actually got the data. And that's going to return, um, that callback is going to be a function that takes an NS dictionary, uh, which returns nothing. And what we'll do is we'll just get our NS uh, URL, which is going to be equal to a new NS URL. And we're going to base that on a string. And the string we want is, of course, the URL that they pass in. So now we can actually start this task. Uh, it's the same as I've done in many tutorials. You just do NS URL, URL session. URL session dot shared session dot data task with URL. And we want the completion handler. So the URL that it's going to take is going to be our NS URL. The completion handler, we can just remove this and we can make it a trailing closure because it was the last argument. So we can say uh, that gets back three things, gets back the data, the response, and error. And we do in, and then we write our actual stuff we want to do when we get stuff back. So we can say var, and we'll just set an error just in case there is an error. We'll do ns error, and we'll mark it as an optional. And then we can create our response. The response is going to be equal to um, the nsjson serialization dot json object with data, and the data that we're going to get back is the data. The options is going to be nsjson reading options nsjson reading options dot mutable containers, and the error is going to be a reference to that error. That's why you do the ampersand because it's a reference. There's not going to be um, the rest of the stuff. We accidentally duplicated it. And we need to mark that whole thing as an NS dictionary. So basically we're re-encoding the response that we got to be a JSON uh, response as an NS dictionary so that we actually turn the string into an object. And what we'll do is now that we have this callback, all we have to do is call the callback. So we do the callback and we pass in the response. And the last thing we have to do is we have to set this thing in motion by doing tasks.resume, otherwise eh, nothing will happen. So basically what's going to happen here is now we have this thing called get posts. Now imagine that you'll do another one called get comments. You'll do another one that says get author, all that stuff. And all it has to do is it's just got to do a one liner in here. This is cool because now you've abstracted this idea of the request. So you can now just call request. And the URL you want is the settings.viewposts, which we wrote in our settings. And the callback is just going to be the callback. So what's going to happen is somewhere we're going to call get posts. It's going to call the request. This thing's going to happen. It's going to call back the callback. This thing's going to call back the callback again, and it's going to return everything we need. So this is going to be super duper simple. I mean, look at how simple this service is. It's freaking awesome. It's amazing. It's blowing my mind. So now all we have to do is just set up the uh, master detail uh, application itself. So we can go into the master view controller now because we are actually all set to go. So in our master view controller, assuming we didn't make any errors, we might have, who knows. In our master view controller, what we want to do is right now, the way it works is there's a collection of objects. And when you first run this app, it's a bunch of dates that you can add more dates on. And that goes into this objects array. Um, because we're not using NS mutable array, we're going to use the, um, the array that comes with Swift, we're going to make an array of posts. And the good thing about renaming this is you'll see all the places that the objects is needed. So as soon as I rename this to post collection, we'll call it posts collection, and we're going to make it a an array of posts. 
and we'll instantiate it as a new array of posts. Now you can see that down here, all these red spots is where we have to fix it because we know that it no longer uh, works with objects. So we'll fix that in a second. Uh, first thing we'll do is we'll just create the service here, which is our is our post service. And we'll mark that with the exclamation because we're going to instantiate it in a second. In our view did load, we can go right after the split part and we just need to, now this is super cool because although if you go into the post service for a second, it's a, you know a good amount of code to actually do the request, turn it into JSON and return it back. The get post thing is only one line of code. And then when we go into our master view application, when we actually say the first thing we want to do is go and get the uh, the posts, all we have to do is first instantiate that service because we didn't instantiate it yet. We'll say it's equal to a new post service. So anytime we want to call any one of those URLs, we just now do it. So now check this out. We want to go get the posts. So we can just say service dot get posts. And we're going to leave all of this out because if you have only one argument and it's a closure, you can actually remove the parentheses and you can do this. So this is going to be like the return of the closure and it's going to return a response and we'll say in and then all we have to do is we just have to say self dot load posts and we'll pass in the uh, posts. So we'll say response, which is going to be a, an NS dictionary and we know Actually, I'll show you. We know that inside this NX dictionary, the first thing that is the array of posts is posts here, this thing right here. So we want to at least grab that. And we know that it's going to be available. So we'll go response. And in there, we'll grab posts. And we'll exclamation point it out. And we'll mark it as an NS array. Now, we don't have any posts yet, but we will in a second. And then we just need to do a closing parentheses and we're good to go. So now we can write this function called load posts. And our load posts function is actually pretty simple. It's, it's, it's actually really simple here. All we're gonna do is we're gonna pass it in all the posts that we got back from the database. So we'll say posts, which is gonna be an NS array because that's what's being passed here. And now all we need to do is we just have to loop through all those posts. So we can say for post in posts, which is what's being sent in this argument. And we can just basically create a new uh, post object. And it's easier if we just collect all this stuff first. So we need to grab the ID. The ID needs to be an integer, but it's gonna come in as a string. So what we need to do is we need to um, grab it as a string and then change it to an integer. So we'll say, um, so we, we go back to this. We're now in each one of these guys. So we're gonna grab post ID. So each object is gonna be a post. So we can say post and in that we can grab post and we can grab ID. And because we know it's going to be in there, we can force each one of these out. We're positive it's going to be there um, as a string. Now it's a string. And now all you have to do to mark it as an integer is just say to int. So we'll get our ID as an integer. And the rest are just going to be strings. So we can say title is equal to post. And we know that it's also in that post. we got to force it out. And we just grab the title as well. So now we're here, we're grabbing this one. So we're looping through each one of these. We grab this whole object and we grab post title. Okay, so we grab the title, we force that out and we mark that as a string as well because we don't know what it's really gonna be. We didn't type it as, an, as anything. Then we're gonna grab the author is gonna be equal to post. We're gonna grab post, force it out. And notice we're not using any external libraries to do this which is just so freaking cool as a string just a little bit of swift foo okay then we're going to grab the uh, content which is going to be equal to the post post 
and content as a string. And then we'll just create our post object. So remember over here, we created this post object which has ID, title, author, content, all that stuff. So now we can actually create individual post objects. So we can say var post object is equal to a new post. ID is equal to ID, title is equal to title, author is equal to author, content is equal to content. Biff, bam, boom, and we're done. Hopefully that didn't, okay. And then all we have to do is we just have to add it to our collection of posts. So we say post collection dot append, and it has to be a new post. So we'll just say post collection dot append post object. And now we have our um, post collection full of post objects. Now, we need to, at this point, reload the table. Let's see what the problem is here. Oh, we need we can mark this there, or we can mark it here. OK, that should fix that. OK, so now we just need to reload the table. Now, here's the problem. We could potentially be inside of a closure right now. And when you're inside of a response from a URL, it's possible that you may not be on the main thread. And in order to make changes to the user interface, you need to be on the main thread. So in order to get us on the main thread, we have to say dispatch async. And the thread that we want to, the queue that we want to use is dispatch get main queue. And we can remove the block and we can write it afterwards, the closure. And so now we can say self.tableview.reload data. So now that should reload the data. So now all we have to do is fix a couple of our issues here that's stuck with objects. So we say we don't even need insert new object right now, so we can delete that. So that should fix that. Objects.count, instead we're going to want post collection dot count so that should fix that um, instead of let object we could do we could change that to posts collection and not as an ns date because we're not dealing with ns dates and since it's already typed as a post we don't even need to mark it as anything we don't even need to force it in uh, downcast it as anything now there's no post.description and just for readability purposes, we can name this as an individual post. And we'll say post, and it's not gonna be dot description, it's gonna be dot title. Because this is saying in our table view, cell for row at index path, that is looping through each individual cell of the table, and it's gonna, you know, make a cell for each for each one. So the cell title that we want to use is our post.title, which we grabbed from the database. We should be good to go. There's a random error here. I'm not sure what it is. Let's just do a, a clean. So I can do Command-Shift-K. Okay, we don't seem to have any errors right now. Let's try and run it and see what happens. Build failed. Okay, there we go. Objects. So prepare for segue. That we're going to just rename to post. And it's not going to be objects, it's going to be um, posts collection. And it's not going to be as an NS date because we're dealing with individual posts. And the detail item is going to be a post. And then down here, instead of object at index, this is the tricky one because we're not dealing with an NS array anymore. We can say posts collection dot remove at index is the new way to do it for the array and we're going to do index path dot row and we'll remove that now we shouldn't have any errors and we're going to try and run this and see what happens now we click the master view and here's all of our post titles so if we go here we can see that it grabbed all of them from the url and it put them in there and if we click on one of these we get something, but it's not the right thing. So the one thing that we have to do before we do anything else is we just have to go into our detail view controller 
And in our detail view controller, it's grabbing the label of the text and it's doing detail.description. And the other thing is that this detail item is marked as an any object. We want it to be uh, marked as a post. We need to mark the detail not as an any object, but as a post. And then once it's marked as a post, it's not going to be detail.description. It's going to be detail.content is what we're going to display. So we're basically grabbing the details of that individual post. So we'll run this. Now, when we click on I like spring, it shows the content of that blog post. This is the springtime. Have a wonderful day today. I hope you have a, one, a great day today. So you could see that this did actually work. Now we left the plus sign in here because we're gonna implement that in the next tutorial. And the swipe left, we have the delete, but if you do it, it's probably gonna crash. So we're gonna leave that out, but we'll do that in the next tutorial as well. And that is how you pull information from a database um, using JSON, parse it, and then display it in a master view collection. We didn't even have to change anything in the actual master view collection itself. We just left the master view collection the way it was. So thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.